Pat Olson with you as we continue from inside the Orleans Arena as the Gonzaga Bulldogs upend the USF Dons 81-71. Maybe the phrase to use is they outlast the USF Dons because USF was coming, coming, and coming. We're joined here by USF Associate Head Coach Chris Gerlifson. Uh, you're opening remarks on this ball game. I, I thought the USF, the guys, showed no quit whatsoever. You're down 24 in the second half. You could have hung your heads. You could have started thinking about the NCAA tournament. But your guys fought, fought, and fought some more. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, I, I thought it was kind of a tale of two halves. You know, the first half, uh, Gonzaga came out with a lot of energy. Uh, obviously, them coming off a loss um, was tough for us. Um, we were trying to find our rhythm in terms of not having Yalian. Um, and we just were kind of going through the motions a little bit in the first half. I didn't think we had enough grit on the offensive end or the defensive end. Um, and we really challenged a group at halftime. Coach Golden uh, got on them a little bit in, in a good way. And we wanted to play until the final buzzer, and I think we did that. You know, we were down 24 with, I think, 12 minutes left in the game. And uh, we battled till the very last buzzer. And as a coach, uh, that's what you want out of your group. You know, there was no, there was no quit. There was no, uh, there was no let up. So super proud of the effort. And uh, now we need to build on that effort of the last 12 minutes and get ready to uh, play in the in the big tournament. You guys are down nine nothing to start the ball game, and at 20 to five in the early going. After it was 20 to five, you outscored Gonzaga the final you know 36 minutes of this ball game. Yeah, no, I, I thought, you know, it started with Khalil Shabazz and, and Julian Rishway, and I thought those two guys played with tremendous grit uh, in the second half, and, and Pat Tappé stepped his game up in the second half, and um, to be in a game like that where you have a chance to cut it, I think we got it to eight, had two shots to cut it to five, and just missed some pretty good looks, and um, to do that all with Jamari not having the type of night that we're used to him having. Have, yeah. um, again, and, and without your center. No, and without Masalski. So, um, you know, overall, did, did we want to lose? No, but I think there's some positives that we can take from the game as we continue to grow and get better. You know, you used the phrase, did we want to lose? No. You know, I, I've been here many times when USF has played Gonzaga in the 1-4 matchup. And it turns ugly sometimes. And you walk out hanging your head. Gonzaga just drills you and wins by 30. And for a while, it kind of felt like that. And I said to Jim at the end of our broadcast, I said, you know, Gonzaga won this game, Jim, 81-71. But it didn't really feel like a loss because of the way USF played at the end. It's not that demoralizing type loss. I know that there's no such thing, that moral victory kind of thing. But when you play the number one team in the country, fall down by 24, come back the way you did it says an awful lot about this club and it truly shows in my mind this team deserves to be playing somewhere in 10 days absolutely um you know i just love our team from top to bottom we're a true team um in every sense of the word and um it was tough being without yalian and we had guys step up in different ways and uh we're going to continue to have to do that and grow um, you know, hopefully we get him back this week and we can kind of get back to normal. But um, I'm just excited to continue to have the chance to work with this group, uh, to coach this group, and, and just be around them on a daily basis because uh, it's been a special, special year. It's been a fun year, um, and we just want to keep going. Yeah, you keep it rocking along. Yalian Misalski went down at the end of the ballgame Saturday against Brigham Young. You guys kept him out of the game tonight. He's, you know, a little bit banged up with that knee injury. How do you feel about his status moving forward? The good news is it's going to be a while now right. before your next game so he can rehab and, and try and get back out there because to do a little damage in the tournament, you probably feel like you need him to be with your group. Oh, absolutely. Um, we're going to take it day by day with him. I think, you know, the team doctors and the medical staff have a great grasp of his injury, and um, we're going to leave it up to them. But, um, you know, it would be nice to get him back and, and kind of get back to a full group. But we'll see what happens. It's day-to-day, -day and um, I know one thing, our group is going to be ready regardless of whether he's in or out, but we anticipate him being back. You know, uh, you, you've got some time now between now and Selection Sunday, and then again another three or four days will go by before you'll play a ball game. It could be 9, 10, 11 days before you get back into game action. Have you and the staff kind of thought about what the schedule will look like 
the next few days so that you keep the guys kind of game fresh. But we're also pretty late in the season, right. so you don't want to wear guys out too much as well. Yeah, I think, you know, we're going to be smart about it. Um, you know, it's been a long year for, for the guys from top to bottom, and, you know, they need a mental rest as much as they need a physical rest. And so we're going to be smart, probably give them a day or two off here uh, when we get back, and we'll have a great plan as we get towards the latter part of the week uh, and we get ready for Selection Sunday. The games that Shabazz and Rich Wayne had, you touched upon them. They both matched their season best. Shabazz with 27, Rich Wayne with 20. Shabazz, a little bit of a slow start, but he just keeps throwing it up there, and it starts going in at one point. He really has played with a lot of fire ever since he, really the last six, eight games, 10 games coming down the stretch. But since the broken nose, he's been really special, I have felt. No, he's, he's playing like he doesn't want his season to end. And, um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to coach a, a pretty long time now, and um, I rank him right up there with the biggest heart of any player I've ever had a chance to be around. And um, he just makes other people around him better. He's always got a great light about him. Uh, He's just, I can't say enough about him, um, but he, he has the ability to really affect the rest of the group. Coach, thanks for the uh, post-game visit. We'll uh, all wait for Selection Sunday. I know that you know, you're know you heavily involved in the scouting, so whenever it is at 322 or 348, when U.S. Def Steve comes up there on the line and you see that opponent, you'll be getting the, the scout ready and pulling tape and all that stuff. Oh, right? absolutely. It's going to be fun. But it's can't the wait. best thing going, right? There's oh. there, you know, only 67 teams and yourself. 68 total are going to have that opportunity to scout and get ready for a game in the NCAA tournament. How cool is that? Oh, it's going to be great. I can't wait to see our name pop up on the screen. And I'm just happy for the staff and the players because they've put so much into this. And uh, I'm just glad I got a chance to be a part of it this year and uh, couldn't ask for anything better. So we're looking forward to Sunday and uh, having another chance to go out and compete. Well, it's been a, a heck of a year and it continues along to March Madness. Thanks, Pat. And this was like a March Madness game here tonight, the way you guys scrambled back. It was. It did. It had that feel to it. And we'll build on it. Yeah, there you go. All right, that's uh, Thanks, USF Pat. Don's associate head man, Chris Gerlifson.